Studies show that roughly 70% of black Americans cannot swim. Now that disparity is largely due to America's ugly history of segregation with pools not being exempt. Dr. Ayana is making waves. Her mission to help the community reconnect with water and reclaim our aquatic heritage. Take a look. Ready, set, go. When I get in water, I just feel free. I feel liberated. I feel like it's the only place where I can be all of myself. Wading deep in the water is where Ayana Roku has been finding freedom since she was six years old. My swim story started actually here in the Twin Cities. I grew up, I would say, with a dual citizenship in St. Louis, Missouri and Minneapolis, Minnesota. But I learned to swim at Blaisdell YMCA and I would see the lifeguards sitting up on the lifeguard chair. I'm like, yeah, I want to do that. And my mom just really understood that it was important put me in swim lessons, and I think I just never turned back. Dr. Ayana is making waves with her organization, Sankofa Swim Institute. She founded it to transform black aquatic culture by designing culturally specific programming and swim trainings. Like 64% of African Americans don't know how to swim. So, that's a lot of us, <laughs> and a lot of us do have that tra trauma behind it. That's really what I want to change. When you hear a number of situations that take place among the black and brown community, of people that are out there and they drown, a lot of them are kids because they did not know how to swim. And at 63 years old, Janie Westbrook says it's never too late to learn. I've always wanted to learn how to swim, had a number of attempts with other people that don't look like me. And she said, Miss Janie, I can teach you how to swim. So last year, I started taking private lessons with her. I started off as a group with me and my two granddaughters, Kai and Sarai. You see them just evolve, it, it's wonderful to see. I've learned how to dive. I've learned how to um, swim back and forth. Mm -hmm. I like the sensation where you can just like float on top of the water and let it take you wherever it goes. And for 10-year-old Sarai Westbrook, these swimming lessons are more than just spending time with her beloved granny. I am so determined to learn how to swim is because when we go on field trips um, to water parks and my friends would go in the deep end, I would be feel left out if I could because I couldn't go with them. But as soon as I learn how to swim, I'll be able to go with them and have fun with them. Some of the most beautiful transformations happen within the first 10 minutes of sessions. So it's that not believing that I can be in here and be comfortable, and then the ease that comes with, okay, I've learned how to breathe, and now I feel a little bit more at ease. That little transformation, that's one of the best I see almost every time I do a session. I've been able to go from one end of the pool to the other. I'm not afraid of you know, going into the deep end. I'm not afraid of diving in. And that was the whole thing, making sure that me being safe as well as my grandchildren. Dr. Ayana invited me to join her in the water, but I was hesitant to get in. After talking to her about my water story, I realized it's because I nearly drowned as a kid. I got to see firsthand how Dr. Ayana naturally makes you feel comfortable in the water. So I got in and eventually even got my hair wet. Black women, their hair in the water is tumultuous. I know how we are, we spend that money on that hair and it's like, mm, not going swimming this week. <laughs> and I think just growing up in Eurocentric societies and learning over time that either what our hair does when it's wet is not good or it's not okay, that has become internalized over generations. And it's just something that we have to unlearn. It wasn't always that way because people of black and African descent we're always the best swimmers, boaters, divers, fishers, surfers of our time. There is a book that I recommend. It's called Undercurrents of Power from the early 13 and 1400s to the early 1800s. What we as people of African descent were doing in water. And we were amazing. We've been free diving. We've been getting jewels and gold and clams and all these things off the bottom of the ocean. And the way we were in water, this is where the idea of mermaids come from. It's us. Something about you seems different. I can't quite figure it out. Europeans were watching us from their boats, which they were afraid to get into water. They were like, this is, it's impossible for any people that don't have fishtails to be able to do this. 
But no, it was us. <laughs> and we were in there doing that thing. This is what our great, great, greats were, were doing to, um, to connect with the world, to connect with the earth. And so, yeah, we got to know that. We got to know that it lives in our, in our body, in our bones. Mastering the water. My legs are super heavy. And so Finding my... healing in the water. Yes. Waiting in the water. I want that for as many people as possible. And this is about liberation. This is about something that was stolen from us. We were told that we weren't, we weren't able to do it. We couldn't do it. And we have to get it back. If we're not using the water, we are completely missing a calling that's built into our bloodline and our genetics. We can, it's a place that we connect with our ancestors, that we connect with ourselves. A lot of our healing is tied up in this. And if we're not aware of that, we will continue to be in bondage in so many ways. To be free in water is to be free.